A circularly shaped piece of metal known as a cam. The beauty of the cam lies in its versatility. Anything that the machine needs to do can be cut into the undulating surface of the cam. The edge of the cam is simply a way of turning circular motion into up and down or backwards and forwards motions. And these motions can be of the most various kind. A feather, a bellows. The movement can be of an amazing range of things. The possibility for variation and design becomes infinite. Cams function as a kind of mechanical memory for a machine. The more detailed and intricate the edge of the cam, the more complex the actions it can store. Automaton builders focused on this device, constantly refining and developing the cams. Devices would be built that contained whole stacks of miniaturized cams. One of the most remarkable realizations of cam technology is a device in the shape of a small boy. It's perhaps the world's most astonishing surviving automaton. What's on this card is a piece of writing made by a 240-year-old machine. One of my favorite machines, one of the most magnificent automata of the 18th century. It's this boy, this writer. He was built in Switzerland by Pierre Jacques Droz, one of Switzerland's greatest clockmakers. And the aim was, I think, to mechanize reason and automate the passions. Jacques Droz was about 50 years old in the early 1770s when he designed and built this masterpiece. Inside the boy are almost 6,000 parts. What's astonishing is that every one of these crafted components has been refined and miniaturized to fit completely inside the body of the boy himself. What Jacques Droz did was to use the technologies of homeostasis, of miniaturization, to build really a true automaton. Inside the little writer, as all his source of energy and all the machinery that drives him. He works on his own. is a great stack of cams. As these cams move, three cam followers read their shaped edges and translate these into the movement of the boy's arm.
Working together, the cams control every stroke of the quill pen and exactly how much pressure is applied to the paper so as to achieve beautiful, elegant and fluid writing. With this sublime machine, Jacques Droz had reverse engineered the very act of writing. But the mechanical boy contained one perhaps even more astonishing feature. The wheel that controlled the cams was made up of letters that could be removed and then replaced and reordered. These allowed the writer, in principle, to make any word and any sentence. In other words, it allowed the writer to be programmed. This beautiful boy is thus a distant ancestor of the modern programmable computer. <laughs>